Welcome to the Post Sports Chat. I'm sports editor Drew Rubenstein, and today we have a special guest with us, former <laughs> WVU football coach and college football Hall of Famer Don Nealon. Coach, thanks a lot for joining us here today. And uh, first off, this will be the 13th season that, that uh, you've been retired and away from the <laughs> sidelines, and it yeah. seems like some coaches dread retirement, but you obviously have a great family, and it seems like uh, you, 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 were, you were ready for the, the change, and, and you've enjoyed it. Oh, I really have. You know, Drew, I coached 43 years. And, you know, some people said, well, Don, you know, you could still coach. But I didn't want to keep coaching. You know, I didn't even know how to play golf. I didn't even know how to score a bowling game. <laughs> I didn't know how to do anything except coach football. And I said, hey, before I die, I ought to find out what else goes on. So I've really enjoyed retirement. Now, I've missed football, and I miss the Mountaineers. And, but I don't miss Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> I only miss Saturday. So uh, I've enjoyed retirement. It's been good for me, and uh, I recommend it. That's great. And, and this Saturday, you will be where the Mountaineers are, and that's yeah. in Norman, Oklahoma. And uh, 31 years since West Virginia wow. last made its trip to Norman, and that's a game that, that uh, stands out as, as one of the greatest in school history in a lot of fans' minds then and still today. And let, let's go back to that 1982 season and just kind of the lead-up to that game. Um, your team was coming off uh, an impressive uh, Gator Bowl win against Florida. That said, Oliver Luck had graduated. You were breaking in a new quarterback. What was kind of the feel, and how did you handle your team leading into that 82 opener at Oklahoma? Well, you know, number one, Oklahoma was a great football team. No question about that. And I'm sure we were a little lucky. But the fact that we had the entire summer as coaches to prepare for the game because they were one of the best wishbone teams in the country. And the wishbone is three running backs and the two halfbacks are speedsters. Well, I don't mind telling you, if I'd have had two halfbacks that were speedsters, they'd have been playing for me, <laughs> let alone trying to emulate that wishbone during practice. Right. But we spent time in the spring, we spent time in the two-a-day practice, and you know, we did a lot of things as coaches, and uh, we had our kids believe and they could win. The biggest thing we had going for us is we had a big league quarterback that nobody knew about, including me. I mean, I knew Jeff was pretty good because two years before that, we were playing Penn State and we knocked Blackledge out of the game. Todd Blackledge was mm -hmm. the quarterback. Right. And I'm saying, hey, we got a chance to maybe pull an upset here. And this guy by the name of Hostetler runs in the game and I'm saying, who's this guy? <laughs> and all of a sudden, he lights us up. He's big and strong and running all over. And I'm in Cleveland and Donnie Young calls me and says, hey, Don, that Hostetler kid's leaving Penn State and he says he's going to Pitter, North Carolina. I said, call him up and tell him he can have the library. He can have whatever he wants, <laughs> but we need him in West Virginia. Anyhow, to make a long story short, Jeff transferred to our place, and uh, we knew he was pretty darn good, but uh, after the Oklahoma game, we knew he was pretty darn good. Absolutely, and I know g leading into that, that summer too, you mentioned Oklahoma's wishbone. You and, and your coaching staff revamped your entire defense, right, leading up to that game because of what they, what they brought? Well, you, you know, it, it, they were going to run the football. They were going to run the football. It didn't matter if you had them all up there. They were still going to run it, and uh, we did a good job. You know, we keyed their fullback with our safeties. We pulled our safeties up, and, and they, they were always pretty much down at least one guy because we had both safeties keying that fullback and, and we were running. We, we took the safety and put him on the quarterback or we put him on the pitch and we changed it up. We feathered our end to take the pitch down in and the safety took the quarterback and then we would switch it around. And, and uh, we got a little lucky. Uh, we did some things pretty good. And our kids believed in our plan because we told our players, listen, they are really quick and they may break one or two on us early don't panic because we'll get accustomed to their speed and lo and behold the second play of the game pew the guy <laughs> goes i don't know 70 or 80 yards and uh, for a score and uh, but our kids didn't panic and uh, and i told them i said hey if we can go in at halftime only down 10 points or two scores against this team we'll win well we go in at halftime and I forget to score. I think we may have been up a point or two or down a I point. I think it was or two. twenty to fourteen. You had twenty Something. unanswered in the second quarter. Something. Mm -hmm. And and so when we go in the locker room, my kids are pounding the dag on. They think the game's over. <laughs> I say, hey, game, we got another half to play. <laughs> hey, coach, we got him. We got him. And it kind of worked out. 
in that game, you, you probably learned a lot about your team because you mentioned overcoming a 14-0 deficit, and then Oklahoma even blocked the punt for a touchdown in the third quarter. When you think about uh, a team on the road at a place like Oklahoma being down 14-0 and then having a pump block for a touchdown, that's a lot of adversity to overcome. Uh, what, what did you learn about your team and, and what was kind of the makeup that they were able to overcome that type of adversity? Well, you know, number one, we found out we were pretty good. And, uh, you know, we came home and played Maryland. Maryland at that time had, had uh, Boomer Esiason, a quarterback. They were the best team in the ACC. And we got to play Oklahoma and Maryland back to back. And we, we, we end up beating Maryland, too. I forget the score is just a point or two. I think they went for two points once and we stopped them. But anyhow, that football team was a bunch of gutty guys. We had very, very little depth, and some of our offensive linemen probably should have been playing at Fairmont. But they were tough kids, they were smart kids, and they were coachable, and they did what they were supposed to do. And normally as an offensive lineman, if you can just get your hat on the right guy, you don't have to knock him off the ball. Just don't let him penetrate and cause havoc with your, with your offense. And that's basically what we were able to do with those guys. And the other thing about that team, obviously well conditioned, um, and and the mental side of the game, I think this is that was a game that that proved just how valuable it is. On the outside, you were saying a lot of things about you weren't sure if your team was going to be able to handle the Oklahoma Heat and Sun. <laughs> Internally, though, it was a different story, right? And then obviously, oh. you guys pulled out 14 unanswered points in the fourth quarter to win. See, I told our team last the spring before, before they went home, I said, "Hey, gang, you got to understand, we're going to beat this team in the fourth quarter." And besides that, we're going to tell them that we won't be able to play them in the fourth quarter because we can't play in that heat. Well, we're going to play better in the heat than they are because we're going to be better conditioned. And I said, so don't believe what you read in the paper because I told everybody, oh, brother, we're not going to be able to play in this heat out there. We're going to die in that fourth quarter. Our kids couldn't wait to get to the fourth quarter. You know, it's a mental game. And, and uh, you know, like I say, we got a little lucky. They bought into it, and we were lucky to win, I guess. WVU won that game 41-27 against ninth-ranked Oklahoma, and they went on to the Fiesta Bowl. So I mean, that was a a solid Oklahoma team, and then your your squad uh, finished the year top 20 and and uh, nine and three with a, a Gator Bowl berth. Um, when you look back uh, 31 years, uh, the significance of that game did that really put West Virginia on the map in your eyes? Well, I don't think there's any question. You know, when I came to West Virginia in December of 1979, West Virginia, they had a poll, the 10 worst football teams, we were in it. That's not a real good poll to be in. And our first year, you know, we had a lot of gutty guys. And, uh, uh, you know, it's funny. Sometimes teams are not ready for a new coach. Sometimes teams are ready. Our team here was ready for a new coach. And that's no reflection on Frank Signetti because Frank did a heck of a job here. But Frank had both hands tied behind his back. Mm -hmm. He had no facilities. Bobby Bowden had left and left the cupboard completely bare. And Frank was fighting a real uphill battle. And then he got sick besides. So I'm not saying anything about Frank Signetti because right. I think he's a special guy. But our kids that were here welcomed me. And uh, I was smart enough to know, hey, I don't know how good they are. They've been through a lot of adversity, but I told them I loved them and I was glad that they were here. I didn't want to chase any of them off because we didn't have many. <laughs> so whatever we had, I wanted to keep. And, uh, and they bought into our program. And like I say, even our first year, we were a pretty solid football team. We were, we were a physical team. We lost some games that first year, but when that other team left the field, they knew they were in a football game because we had some tough kids that would hit you. And then the second year, you know, we didn't have a lot of players, but we had Oliver Luck. Mm -hmm. And Ollie was smart and could get the ball where we wanted the guy to, to, to deliver the ball. Mm -hmm. And anytime you have a big league quarterback, you're in business. And so Ollie got us nine wins that second year, and uh, we beat Florida in that bowl game. And then Jeff sitting in the wings. And then we go out there and beat Oklahoma. And so with the Florida and Oklahoma win back to back, people all of a sudden say, hey, these guys are for real. I don't think any, up until the Oklahoma game, I don't think anybody in the country thought we were a good football team. 
And after the Oklahoma game, they said, whoa. And then beating Maryland the next week kind of put the nail in the coffin, so to speak. We were at home. We finally got it done. We were a top 25 team. And within a couple of years, you beat Pitt when Pitt was on a on, uh, oh. uh, national prominent team and, and Penn State. And, and really, though, that was kind of the beginning, uh, even recruiting and everything. Did it change after beating Florida and Oklahoma in back-to-back -back games? No question. We could go in homes with our chest out. Uh, when I first started to recruit, they didn't think we wore shoes. It was the daggonest thing I ever saw. They kept saying, well, we've been to Richmond. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, I'm, I hear one more. I've been to Richmond. I'm going to kill them. <laughs> I said, we're West Virginia. But anyhow, uh, there was no question the Oklahoma victory put us on a level that we could compete with anyone, and people believed that. And the program competed for two national championships under you, and then uh, here we are 31 years later, WVU's making the trip to Oklahoma in the same conference as the Sooners. Um, I know you, you got to take in WVU season opener. How do you feel about the Mountaineers leading into to this time around at Oklahoma? Well, you know, I don't know enough about it. You, you know, I'm still not a Big 12 guy yet. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I, you talk to me about uh, Syracuse and Rutgers and, and all the Pitts and those teams, I knew a lot about them, but I don't know that much. I only have one year with the Big 12. I would assume that Oklahoma has some pretty good football players. Uh, they've always had some pretty good football players, but to be honest, they've never impressed me when I've seen them. Uh, we went out there in 82 and we won, and uh, Billy Stewart's team played them right. in the uh, bowl game and we blew them out of there. Last year, uh, we had one guy gain almost 500 yards right. against this team. So I'm saying, well, you know, maybe Oklahoma is a uh, is a mirage or something. I don't know how good these guys are, but I got a feeling we will play them very well because we have some athletes. And you know, the, the stage is set pretty good. They had a big victory. We had a victory we're not so happy about, but a win's mm -hmm. a win. And so these guys are flying high and we're saying we got to get better. So, you know, don't count the Mountaineers out against this Oklahoma team. Great. Coach, I appreciate your time and enjoy your trip to Norman this yeah. weekend. And uh, thanks for uh, tuning in to the ddpost.com. Please continue to check the website. We'll have uh, complete coverage of the Mountaineers trip uh, to Norman, Oklahoma before, during, and after the game. Thanks a lot.